I want to show you a little experiment I've been doing, um, doing kind of world building and city building using GPT. Uh, I'm going to show you on this site. This is something I've set up for my own personal experimentation. It's public, but it's it's not really intended to be public. But if you want to check it out, it does exist. So uh, buyer beware. Um, I'm going to show you, you know, the basic idea is about building a city. Um, so we'll start a little bit like, you know, here we have a desert city. Uh, I haven't set a key yet, so usually you would actually hit this slightly earlier. So you have to put in your own GPT key. Uh, I don't, I don't want to pay for <laughs> other people to use this because it does add up. Um, so if you add a GPT key, it will be kept in your browser in local storage. It's, it's not um, something I will have access to. And I, I'm going to delete this one at the end as well. So you have to sign up with OpenAI. You might get some free credits to start with. Uh, so here, we'll, we'll set it up there. Um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch this. We're going to use one that I've already kind of done a little bit um, because GPT is not the quickest to respond. And I've, I've cached all these results. Um, just make this faster. So if you look over here, you'll see here is the uh, request we're sending to GPT. And that's going to be true for everything we send to GPT. You'll see it on the side here. Uh, the stuff in black is our prompt. This is what we're kind of asking for. And the stuff in red is what GPT responds with. So here we said, you know, give us a list of things. And you're going to get a different list of things when you do this as well. Uh, you can hit this refresh if you want to want to get a different list um, force one. So we're going to do an apocalyptic city. And again, these are instant because I have already gone through this path and they are cached. Um, we'll call it uh, shrouded outpost. So these, these properties that we're setting here are things that are going to be used in kind of all the following prompts. So they set up the basis for how everything else is going to work. Uh, so, so far we said it's a post apocalyptic city. It has a name. This backstory is going to be an important part too. Um, here we can kind of set different kinds of technology. Um, if you uh, are dealing with something where there's like very limited technology or, or things are made in a peculiar way, it's, it's important to sometimes talk about building materials. Uh, here, if you don't if you don't specify something, it's going to be normal-ish, right? And so a post-apocalyptic city actually has relatively normal buildings. It's not like um, I tried to build uh, a city that was pirates uh, where the whole city was at sea and the, and the buildings would be built on boats. And it didn't understand that really, <laughs> and it and it, it kept think, making things that didn't make sense on a boat, right? So you have to be specific if it's something that's not not that default. Um, so we're gonna say maybe give some information about its geography and say it's multicultural. And I'm gonna actually double double click here to add my own little little thought. So we want to make it a little more exciting. We'll say, um, and not just religious traditions. We'll get kind of uh, post-apocalyptic. Um, you can set the neighborhood name, like they could be called something else. This doesn't actually turn out to make much of a difference, but um, so here we've like set the backstory, and that's going to be used in all of the different queries. And next, we're going to like give some neighborhoods. And the neighborhoods are, are an opportunity to have um, really kind of distinct things again. Like we want we want things to be distinct. We don't want this kind of mush of of locations. Um, here, I must have changed something slightly, probably the order in which I did these backstory items. And so the cache is not being hit. Um, and as you can see, it takes a little bit longer. So here's some things, Crowny, Craggy Mountain Valley, uh, Technodome, that sounds fun, um, Derelict Alley, uh, you know, and, and if you redo these, the, even the length of the description is often something it'll kind of roll a die about how, how involved it wants to get. So all these are going to be about the same length. And we can be like, oh, we want even more. So we can click more and it'll, here, you, if you look at the prompt, basically the same prompt and it says, here's everything you give me more, now give me more choices. Um, so it, it'll be aware of the old choices 
and it'll have some consistency across them. Uh, but that can also be a downside because if it's consistent and you didn't like any of them, then it might be consistent with the things you didn't like. Uh, so, you know, we got your, your freak show, uh, techno dome, um, Oh, a forbidden forest. I don't know what that would be like in a desert, but um, I have kind of a variety of things here. Uh, so we've added these down here. Let's let's see what kind of buildings it'll suggest inside of here. Now this is where we're getting our first structured output. Before we've done plain text, and that makes sense. So it's plain text because we're really just creating the narrative that defines how things are going to work. Now we want to actually create things that would be instantiated in a game, right? Like you would have actual buildings that exist someplace and actual buildings have an actual size. Um, this, this frequency was like kind of like a idea that we place them randomly. That didn't work out and probably doesn't deserve to exist. But um, yeah, so this kind of gives some some different things. Um, you know, I put in, uh, this is the prompt that really defines this part of it, right? This is a city, this is the neighborhood, this is the thing that describes this list that I want here. So for instance, I said we want a few residences because it would often leave off all houses or places where people would live. Um, colorful descriptions give each building a distinct personality. Again, it's going to default to being very stereotyped and often a little bit boring. And the way you get around that is not that hard. You just have to say, don't be that way. So right, colorful descriptions, exotic names, things like that, and it'll, it'll do that. But you do have to say it. <laughs> you do have to like ask for those things. Um, so you're a mad scientist lab. Sure, let's just try that one. So now we have a mad scientist lab, and we can go back and add more if we wanted. But we're going to add more story to this um, by getting some occupants. And I think this is actually one of the things that's fairly successful. Um, again, uh, here we have the, the city thing, and then here we have, you know, here are people who live in the mad scientist lab, and, you know, give each person an interesting and culturally appropriate name. Again, without that, it would often come up with generic names. Um, and here, again, this is the thing that defines the format that we're asking for things in. Um, you notice I use first name, last name. I, I started out using, I think, just like John Doe, and it thought too much about that, right? And then it started coming up with names that were like Jane Doe, uh, Jack Smith, etc. And so anything you put in here, it will bring back to you. Um, and actually, like here I have a wealthy merchant, and in fact, it will constantly suggest merchant owners, and I should probably reconsider that that item there. Um, these are important examples that can be positive, but they can also be negative in that it, it can put it down a certain certain area. Um, so yeah, here's some Vladimir and uh, someone with a cult. So these would be people that, you know, if we if we built like a game or a map, these would be people be hanging out a lot of the time, visitors or other characters that might come into the place. Um, and you know, each of these have name description type, which I don't think we make enough use of, but there's a lot of opportunity there to start thinking across the whole map in terms of types. Um, and you know, here's some more, again, like this one, something about the way that I describe this here, it really likes tourists. Um, so th this actually doesn't seem to be too biased towards tourists, but uh, yeah. It's pretty common for it to be like, oh, here's like various different kinds of tourists that want to come there. Um, and then we have rooms. And rooms is where, you know, I had this idea that it would be building a map. And of course, a map has buildings and it has rooms. Um, I think this is where it starts to get too detailed. And this is not the right approach for it because it's a lot of work. Uh, it's a lot of work for GPT to do. And then therefore, there's some cost to that. And it's just a lot of going through, and it's not that interesting. Um, so you know, you might have some some different places in here. Um, 
the, again, these are structured. And here, one thing I, I really like is this idea of like, let's declare whether this room is like secret or public or giving some of those ideas. Um, because again, G GPT is pretty good at like understanding those relationships. So if you did want to do things like who owns these items, is it appropriate for you to go in here? How do people react? Uh, GPT can like define those um, much better than like a standard procedural generator could do. Um, so here we have a cloning chamber and then we ask for furniture and this is where it really gets too detailed. Um, but let's see what it comes up with. I realize I actually have um, so here it is, you know, a list of furniture and, and gives an example and this isn't too bad. Um, it, it doesn't really understand the difference between items and furniture very well. Um, and, and that distinction, you know, the idea would be furniture would be permanent fixtures in the room and items are things you might be able to take. It doesn't, that, that either requires better descriptions than I've given or, or something. Um, and I'll show just a little bit more, maybe with a different, uh, let's go down to the techno dome here and, you know, how do you, how do you adjust it when it doesn't get something right? And let's hope that it like comes up with a bad list somehow. Um, oops, something went wrong here, here. If you look at this, there's a nice JSON list and it ends in a semicolon, which is one, there's like always a slightly new way to do these things that I have not thought through. <laughs> so the semicolon in this case broke it. And, and this has just been a little heuristic thing. Um, definitely need some better ways to, to handle some of this. Um, I am parsing it as JSON five which allows unquoted key names and allows comments. Uh, and then there are some crude heuristics to try to keep it working. Um, but that is not, not always successful. Um, I'm sure there's better ways. But I'll just quickly show one more thing here about, well, let's, let's go back up here where we have multiple rooms, I want to show the room connections as well. So going back to this room that we looked at before, which is the uh, mad scientist lamp, which has several rooms and it's not successful, but I'll, I'll show what it does. Uh, this is slightly different pattern. We don't give different choices. We just want it to like see how these rooms attach to each other. And so, you know, here you can say, you know, is this a lockable thing? That's not a good idea. This should definitely be locked, right? Because the cloning chamber is secret. Um, these connections often don't make sense. Uh, I think there's ways that we could ask for this slightly differently and get much better results. Uh, there's also a possibility that we don't need to do this in GPT at all. And it's, and it's not actually creating an intelligent or useful um, way to, to connect these rooms. Um, just go down. Go down back here to the witch's cottage. Uh, you know, here we have some just very standard rooms. Again, this is where it gets really boring. You start creating lots of living rooms and all the living rooms have like some stuff in them. It's very, um, let's, let's say, uh, more evil and ominous. So in some things we've, you'll see chat approaches. And this doesn't use a chat approach really. This is just changing, redoing the prompt with a slight change, right? So this is the same prompt as before with our little note here. And that'll, that'll give us like, oh, oh yes, much more evil. <laughs> so um, that's one way to, to do that. Now that's only applied to this one house and this one building. Uh, I think if we started to give these buildings, um, um, if we gave them better, types and started categorizing them, we could think about how to make these little annotations uh, apply more widely across many buildings and then allow you to kind of build up the flavor in, in a more explicit way as you move move around the, the city. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I got.